I'm gonna do my own YouTube video on these Swagtron T6 hoverboards. Couldn't really find a really good review that broke down about everything. But uh, here they are, I got four of them. They have about 15 miles average on each of them between me and my kids riding them. But I'm gonna do a tear down, kind of take it apart, get a look at it, you know, see what kind of problems and issues that I've already had out of them. Do a little quick video on the app that you can download off the app store about the Swagton or any of the Swagtons. This is for the T6 version. Go ahead and power it on. I already turned the balancing on. I'll show you how to turn that on and off in through the app. And see, you can do all the login if you want. I've already logged into mine. I'm gonna go ahead and hit skip pick which one you want i think some of them might have different options is the reason why they have it like that let's see bluetooth swagtron and the default is always six zeros okay okay standby you can always turn your hoverboard off and on by pushing standby You can check your mileage, everything right here. The odometer you cannot change. It's there on it forever, so if you ever buy a used one, you can always check the odometer. Battery temperature, your distance traveled, that's, you know, per trip, speed and all that. And you can go into your settings here. You can actually change your name of, the, name of it, miles per hour, your kilometers. Uh, has your battery info, day since last charged zero because i just took it off charge and number of times completely discharged uh that's a little bit different it doesn't tell you how many times it's been discharged what it actually is is when you charge it all the way to 100 percent from the charger it, ca it counts it as a one full discharge so it tells you how many times it's been charged to 100 percent not fully discharged all right there's self-balancing mode here you just hit it you can actually turn it off and on. Right now, the self-balancing is turned off. What will happen is, is when you turn it on, it will not automatically come up for you to stand on it. But once you turn the self-balancing mode on, it automatically stand up and level out for you. So I always turn that on, it just seems more simple. And if you do, say you crash and the wheels come off the ground, and it you crash and it lands down, what you do is touch the pad, it'll stand back up for you. With it off, this thing always falls. As soon as you step off of it, it'll fall over. All right, let's see if there's anything else on this. Uh, you do have the GPS, uh, but you do have to have a cellular service, and I don't have cellular service on this, but I do have Wi-Fi. Go ahead and get go. Allow. That. And I'll tell you, where you're at here and it tracks the entire path that you've taken so if you ever go out anywhere and you want to come back you can always look at it you can see where you've been and your mode the last thing here you can set it on advanced learning or standard uh, learning it'll adjust everything down to four slow and then set steering sensitivity to low and standard is pretty well in the center advanced sends everything to its highest setting but i adjusted the steering sensitivity down because when you're at higher speed it seems like it wants to turn too fast and cause you to actually lose control but there again it might be more of a preference and there's a little bit about the app i'll jump on to something else this part of the video i'm going to tell you a little bit about what's inside these. I'm going to take these six screws out that are right here and this plastic cover will come off on either side. Uh, if you ever want to know what would they look like inside uh, and you didn't want to break this factory void seal, I'll go ahead and do that so you can actually get a look inside because I haven't really found anything about what they are inside. Uh, the battery is on this side and the 
the main computer chip that does all the Bluetooth and whatnot is on the side here. And obviously you have both the self-balancing sensors from where your foot pads are on the side here. Go ahead and open it up. All right, got the, all the screws loosened up. Go ahead and pull this up. Now, there's two plugs on each side there. They go to these lights here. The front one goes to the front, and the back one goes to the back. This one's got the charger assembly on it. Um, and then you have a power button on this side. Uh, and when I said the battery was on that side and the uh, computer chip was on that side, I had those backwards, sorry. Correction, the chip is on this side and the battery is on the non-void side. So if you ever had to replace the battery, you don't actually have to break the seal. They just don't want you on this side is why. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull these two off right here. All right, here is the inside. I went ahead and took off both covers and these sensor pads that are underneath that sense when you're standing on the hoverboard. Uh, I ran into an issue with one of these. Uh, when I just got it in, I guess I'm gonna drop the package and it landed on its side and pushed the wheel in. And it's got these bolts under here, these torque bolts. And this shaft in here uh, is able to slide on there. And what happened is, is this hub, the silver part of the hub was pushed into the frame it was grinding when it would turn. It would actually, you could feel it stop the tire and hear a grinding noise. And to fix that, you just have to pull, take this off. There's just four screws. Just pick this up. Just kind of move it to the side. And there's these torque bolts there. These four. And I think I might have the right size here. Oh, next size up. Uh, this is a five millimeter. Go ahead and get the next size up. Let's see if that, see if that does it. Yeah, All right, it's that size there. It is a six. What you do is just loosen these up. Torque these. Yeah, that one wasn't even really that tight. I haven't had this one, I haven't tightened these. But I've noticed that some of these bolts weren't all the way tight because that first one I just undone was fairly easy. Like that, yeah, that one there, I have to hold the board down to, to loosen it. That one's tight. That one wasn't too bad. But once you loosen these up a little bit, the shaft in here is able to slide in and out of the little, just a little bit. I need to loosen up just a little bit more. All right. I don't know if you can see that in there. But those will loosen up and it will move that shaft in and out. All right, I got it to move here. I had to stop the video because I couldn't hold on to it. But you get a little wiggle here. You can see it, see it move out. And you can see the, the distance in between the hub and the frame. What happened is that thing got slid in. And it was rubbing the side of that. So you have to pull that out all the way. There's a little catch on the back of this where it's actually supposed to sit. Another issue that I had with this is when you're driving, since these tires are kind of more knobby than the uh, regular standard hoverboards, it causes a little bit of vibration when you're riding at a lower speed or if you hit a certain speed, it'll vibrate just right. And this plate here, this guard, will vibrate just a little bit, but it's enough that if these screws here are on each side, if they are not tight, it'll cause a vibration, a noise. And uh, I had to come back and tighten these screws up just a hair. I mean, they were tight, but they're not 
they had they just had just a little bit of play just enough to make a little bit of noise and i tightened that up and it stopped it there's those on every side uh you can access these screws without having to take these covers off you can access those screws without taking covers off that are right on the inside you just have to have a longer screwdriver because you have to be able to reach down without you know without it hitting the side of the tire see this one here you can tell it's at an angle you just have to have a longer screwdriver and uh, I would almost recommend tightening these up when you do get your board if you feel comfortable about taking this stuff off tighten these screws up on on either side make sure they're tight but don't over tighten them because this is an aluminum housing and it can strip but those bolts are pretty big and uh, it's got a pretty good solid block of aluminum that's down there and uh, just yeah just don't over tighten them I don't know what the torque specs on them because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not going to give it to you or you're not going to be able to find them but there's, there's that all right a little bit about the battery here you could see that it has its uh, model and capacity on it here at uh, 37 volts at 2.6 amp hour and it has a total capacity of 96.2 watt hours that's actually less than what i expected i expected at least a four amp hour battery um, but this is a 2.6 amp hour um, but they rate this as the, being the highest um, rated miles out of almost any hoverboard that's made today and the only reason I think that is, is because it has the air filled tires that are tall. And I think when you're in a cruise, when you get up to speed, um, I think you are have a lot more efficiency. And that's the reason why a 2.6 amp hour battery is beating out some of the hoverboards that are 4 amp hour battery in distances because it has the taller tires. So, I mean, if it was an uphill challenge to where, say, you was going continuously uphill, let's say 10% grade, this here would probably get ate up a whole lot faster than some of the other hoverboards. But for cruising, this will cruise a lot further than any of the other hoverboards. Uh, the connector here, uh, if you guys fly RC helicopters or anything like that, or do any kind of modifications on your own, uh, these are the XT60 connectors, and they're rated at 60 amps continuous pull. So these connectors that uh, Swagtron had used are very well. Uh, the wire itself doesn't actually look like it would actually hold 60 amps. Uh, it might hold about 30 or maybe 40 before it would burn. But either way, um, a 300 watt a piece off each motors 600 watts uh, you do the math but um, I'm pretty sure that's not nowhere near 30 amps of draw pull but go ahead and pull the battery out and I'll get a little video of the inside of the battery all right this is the battery cover I just went ahead and unscrewed it and pulled it off there it was a little sticky get it off uh, reason being it has this double-sided uh, tape and just about everything, which I'm pretty sure everything uses the 18650 batteries, the 3.7 volt batteries. And um, they've always been proven to be really good batteries depending on the brand and whatnot. <clears throat> One thing I do like they did with Swagtron is they designed this aluminum housing to go around the battery because you know everybody talking about the hoverboard fires which i'm pretty sure that's a thing in the past now because i haven't heard anything every post i've ever seen about one catching on fire has been an old post like uh five six years ago but um, each one of these cells they have their own microchip on them and they self-balance all all of these uh batteries so they're all equally charged and the charger itself cuts off once it gets to a certain voltage and this also cuts off these computer chips tell the charger to quit charging as soon as it gets to its um, preset uh, voltage. So 
So it's got two safeties on it to don't that won't allow it to overcharge. Which I, I mean, this is just in case this will seal down and seal it. And if it ever does catch fire, the idea is that this case will enclose all the dangers of the whole thing bursting into flames. Uh, one more thing I, didn't, I forgot to mention. Um, if you ever see, um, if you're going to Walmart or wherever that you're buying any hoverboard, how it says it's a 20 cell battery. Uh, well, this is also a 20 cell battery. I don't know, I don't know why the capacity only says 2.6 amp hour, but um, these batteries, uh, they are different. Like when you, if you ever went on eBay, Amazon, anything, looking up an 18, 18650 battery the the capacity is different some of them have a higher uh amp withdrawal and some of them have a higher capacity with with lower amps and that's why the batteries are different this one maybe um has a higher amp pull is the reason why it's only got a 2.6 amp hour rating but um it's what i can figure on these batteries but um I seen some of them at, um, at Walmart that had um, had a four amp hour battery rating, but it was still a 20 cell battery. Is this? This is pretty well the most you can get out of any hoverboard is a 20 cell. Um, but yeah, if uh, this batter battery ever went bad, you can just replace it with the ones that you can buy offline. But uh, hopefully it would fit inside this casing here because I would definitely want it in the casing for safety reasons. All right, back together and I wanna do a quick ride. Uh, I'm gonna try to get the uh, percent of angles of going up and down hill, how it, um, how it rides. But uh, I let a little bit of the air pressure out just so it rides a little bit smoother and it's a little bit more stable on cross gravel when the tires are just slightly lower. Reason being is um, when you hit a rock and it kind of wants to jam under the tire and stop you, uh, with a little bit lower air pressure, it allows it to roll over it without uh, stomping on you so violently, making you fall off of it. But um, I still got this thing on learning mode. Uh, I'm gonna have to turn, change that real quick. I'll have to stop the video. Advance on the highest setting. Oh. It's pretty stable, even though you're hitting stuff with it. Um, but there again, letting the air pressure out just a little bit does make this thing go quite a bit better. I think we're going about eight to 10. It's starting to get a little wobbly hitting the bumps. But uh, I weigh uh, about 165 pounds and it does really well. Uh, I don't want to take it too fast because uh, I don't want to eat shit. I already have uh, crashed one time trying to test the top speed. I hit about 13 on it <laughs> and uh tore my hand up a little bit and my side and my knee and my elbow going down through here the range i have not tested the range it probably be a later video on the actual range of blowing the pressure of the tires because it says it'll get 12 but i don't think it'll get 12 nowhere near 12 uh, with up and down hills and you know having tires lower with my body weight um, a little bit of a hill right here I have a protractor app on my phone and I'll uh, get back with you just a second and I'll tell you what the angle is all right I'm back um, 
this little hill here, uh, it's about a 4% grade, which it should have no problem going up a 4% grade, which it doesn't. It doesn't with ease. I mean, I can stop and accelerate pretty easily on this. Um, this here, where it kind of drops off, it's between 23 and 26% grade, and which they advertise 30, it says up to 30, which I already know that it is not going to go up that with me on it. And I weigh 165 pounds. Uh, this here is um, about 15% grade. This little hill here, and I do, I mean, I do got lower tires, air pressure on the tires, and it being in the dirt will affect the uh, percent of incline you can go up. But I can hear, feel the motors wanting to struggle. It just hit its limit right there. But, I mean, it went up it with 165 pounds. Oop. Hit a little dip in it, and uh, that's all it had. That's all it had right there. Hit a little dip, and it had to pull a little harder to get up that, and it just didn't went up. Oh, yeah, it's hitting its limit. But, I mean, that's 15, about 15% 15 grade. Uh, this here, where the road kind of drops off which is 25% grade, and I'll just go ahead and show you that it, it will not go up it. You can, I can, yeah, it just spun the tire. Uh, I'll try it again, but the motors were just, uh, they're struggling. I'll go down here where it's slightly smoother, maybe a little more gravel, but it's not gonna go up this at all. Like you can see the board really like lean all the way into it with all of its power. But it won't go up it. But now if I get a little bit of a run, like kind of prepare myself for it, I can get it to go up it, you know, just kind of hit it, and kind of hop over it, I guess, in a way. But um, it might go up a 30% grade uh, with, sorry about the wind. Um, it might go up a 30% grade if, I mean, you weighed like, 80 100 pounds maybe but i just don't see it with an adult being able to go a 30 percent incline but other than that i mean just cruising around uh, level ground or up and down little hills here and there uh, it'll do just fine go through the grass but uh, i would not recommend trying to go to the full 12 mile an hour that it rates it at reason mean because it does when you're at its full power its full speed uh, and one side starts to go a little faster than the other and you try to get the other side to you know to catch up with it considering it's at its maximum speed it will not catch up with it and it will you'll just be unstable and out of control and you'll just end up crashing we're having to step off of it hopefully you can run go from standing to a 13 mile an hour sprint instantly because that will that's exactly what will happen all right i was going to test the incline and do different degrees to see what it will pull up a hill uh, tires are all the way inflated to 41 psi and i weigh 165 pounds this is at a 12 degree angle by my protractor and uh see how see how it goes up it I'll get it over that little lip first. Yep. You gonna it'll go up the hill. And it feels like it's uh having a little bit of difficulty difficulty with that. Have hitting that little lip there. Throws you off a little bit. I wanna change the angle. Alright. Changed the angle, just pulled the board up a little bit more. That's a uh, 15 degree angle. All right. It's struggling. If you can keep your balance. Yeah, 15 degree angle is about as max as it can go up with 165 pounds granted it would go up a 30 percent grade if weighed half my weight i mean 
If you weighed 70 pounds, it should go up to 65, 70, 80 pounds. You should be able to go up a 30% grade at full power. I could feel the motors struggling. I can feel them vibrating under my feet. I could feel it when I lean forward, how it's hitting the maximum power. I just don't want to burn the motors up by struggling it that long on the motors. I could feel it in my feet. Can't really explain it, but if you rode them, you'd probably know. All right, I'm going to try just a little bit more and see if I can get it to fail. All right, 20%. It struggled. I do really like the handle they put in there in the center. Yeah, that was all I had right there. Yep. All right, so there you have it. Can't go up 20% with 165 pounds. All right, just make it a quick little video on uh, the one I was posting on this is me just driving around for now this is about my average speed I've been driving or riding uh, I got 75% battery still I've been averaging about between five and eight mile an hour is what I've been cruising at uh, let's see rode about 1.1 miles and used probably about 20% battery because it was about 95%, 93% when I started. Turn it around. get about 11 or 12 it's better be prepared to, uh, <laughs> to possibly fall if you start getting a little wobbly mile range would be someone that weighed like 50 or 60 pounds for sure and this is a fairly new battery uh, you can tell it says the odometer's only got 2.9 miles on the entire board so it's a brand new board brand new battery say thanks for watching